Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. I know you guys have really been enjoying the drugstore content lately and I definitely have as well. So I was starting to prep for my next what's new at the drugstore video and in doing that, I realized there are way too many makeup launches to include them in a video with new skincare launches as well. So in today's video, we are going to be reviewing all of the fun new drugstore makeup launches. And in the meantime, I am still on the lookout for any new skincare launches that I think that you guys might be interested in for our next installment in this video. All right, let's jump into it. First up is a newly reformulated foundation from Revlon. It is the Revlon Colorstay Longwear Makeup for combination slash oily skin. And they also do have a newly reformulated version for normal to dry skin, but this is what I was sent in PR. When I read the description of this foundation, I was like, oh yeah, this is gonna be right up my alley because it's described as a breathable, buildable, oil-free foundation that offers flawless 24-hour wear and helps to improve your skin's appearance while resisting heat, sweat, and humidity. When I first applied this, I loved how it looked. It really did just look flawless and skin-like and beautiful and offered just enough coverage to help to even out my skin tone, but did not look too heavy and too makeup-y or too intensely full coverage. But unfortunately, as the day went on, I started to realize that I just didn't like how my skin looked. I feel like anytime I was like in the bathroom and caught my skin, in the mirror. I was like, what is going on? This doesn't look good. And then I would remember that I was wearing this foundation. And when I started to look up close, I realized it's mostly because it was like settling into lines. And that's not something that I usually ever have an issue with, with foundation. So on my forehead, it was settling into lines and just like emphasizing things in a way that they are not normally emphasized. So I don't know, this one for me just didn't quite work out, unfortunately. It's definitely not something that I would say is going to be a bad product for everybody. I know a lot of people really loved the original version of this foundation, and I would be curious to hear your thoughts if you have tested out the new version of this, whether it be for combination oily skin or normal to dry skin. Let us know in the comments below whether you had a similar experience to me or really loved it. I hope that a lot of you are enjoying this because you know I love a good affordable foundation, but for me, this one is a pass. I received a really fun PR package from Physicians Formula with several new products products that I was excited to test out. So the first is their new Physicians Formula Butter Glow Concealer. This is described as a multi-use radiance boosting concealer that delivers buildable flawless coverage and awakened skin to help you achieve flawless looks with a seamlessly radiant finish. I feel like that said a lot of the same thing in like 50 different ways. Okay, so this does have a little sponge applicator attached to it. And I was worried at first because I thought it was gonna be a twist up like the Maybelline Age Rewind Concealer. And I just am not obsessed with applicators like that but it actually does have a normal doe foot on the end of it. So I think this is just like, if you wanna blend it further, I clearly haven't touched it. I don't know what it is. There's something about having something that can get dirty attached to my makeup that just isn't my favorite thing. Like I'd rather have a sponge that I can clean and then throw away when the time is right to replace versus being stuck with a permanently dirty lid on a concealer. You know, maybe that's just me. So upon initial swatch of this concealer, I was like, whoa, this is super, super lightweight. It has like a watery consistency to it that I was not expecting because I feel like I have never tried a drugstore concealer with a consistency like this, where it's just super lightweight. And as you blend it into the skin, feels weightless. So I love that about it. And I don't have any issues blending it, but I wouldn't say that this gives me a ton of coverage. What did they say again? Um, buildable flawless coverage. I would say it's a little bit buildable. It starts off light in coverage and then I can build it up to be medium. This is definitely not something that I can get to be full coverage on me though. So if you are a full coverage concealer kind of guy or a gal, then this will not be for you. But if you do like something that's a little bit lighter in coverage and is weightless, then you may really love this. However, this is a little bit of a finicky formula for me where sometimes I think it looks beautiful and flawless and just skin-like and like, <laughs> What? Talking sometimes is just not my forte. What I'm trying to say is sometimes I really love the way this looks under my eyes. It lasts really well. I don't have issues with it. 
Other times with certain setting powders, or maybe if I try a different brush to apply a setting powder, it just doesn't really work and it'll start to settle into lines and look really creasy or dry pretty quickly, like within an hour of wear. And that's obviously not something anyone wants. And I have been experimenting with a few different setting powders lately, two of which you're going to see me talk about in this video. So I have been able to play around with a few different products with this. And that has helped me to realize that this like I said, is finicky and just doesn't always work. So I do love it when I use it with a setting powder that works. Like for example, my Sigma Soft Focus setting powder, that works beautifully with this. But if you're looking for something that is just foolproof and beautiful no matter what, I don't think this is gonna be the one for you. But if you're okay playing around with it a bit, maybe you have a large setting powder collection and the idea of this being super water-like and weightless is really enticing to you, well then, what the heck, try it out, it's affordable. Ooh, before we move on from that, what I will say is that they also sent me some deep shades and at first I was like, um, have you seen what I look like? But then I realized they probably did that with the intention of it being used as a liquid bronzer or contour. So I did try to use this as a liquid bronzer and I freaking loved it. Something about that just water light texture makes it blend beautifully and look so natural on the skin. It is absolutely stunning as a liquid bronzer and surprisingly has really, really great long wear. I don't have any issues with it on like the complexion areas of my face where I bronze in the way that I do with concealer under my eyes. So it's not like it breaks up or goes patchy or anything like that. This has been beautiful as a liquid bronzer. So I have reached for this several times since I got it for that purpose. I'm really enjoying it for that. So if maybe the concealer sounds like it's just too much of a potential issue for you, but you're looking for a liquid bronzer, pick up a deeper shade. Another product that they sent me that is actually a liquid bronzer is the Butter Glow Liquid Bronzer. They only have this one single shade in this product, so I would love to see them come out with more shade options because it's a really beautiful product. It blends easily, it's just really nice and easy to work with in that sense, and it looks really, really beautiful on the skin. It's fresh, it gives you this like healthy, glowy radiance, super nice. I have an itch inside my nose. And another reason why you wouldn't wanna pack on on the product here aside from it being really pigmented is just because the consistency is like pretty wet and creamy so when you just use a little bit of it it feels super lightweight but if you were to add a lot it would just be too wet and slippy and creamy so again just want to emphasize a little bit of this please they also have a butter glow liquid highlighter in the same kind of packaging as the liquid bronzer this also only comes in one shade which again is a C oh my gosh I did it again it's like I don't intend to squeeze a bunch out but then a bunch comes out and you're like dang that's too much Anyway, what was I even saying about this? I completely lost my train of thought. Oh, that this also only comes in one shade, just like the bronzer. And it's like a, I would say light champagne-y champagne. <laughs> Definitely a beautiful shade, but definitely not going to be something that works for every skin tone. So again, hopefully we see more shades in the future because this is also a beautiful product. This one, they say that it can be worn alone, under makeup or over foundation. So I wanted to test this out as a cheekbone highlight and brow bone highlight over foundation. Since my skin already is a bit oilier, I was nervous about putting this all over my face and I absolutely loved it in that way. I love that this is a little bit buildable in terms of coverage, but it's not going to be something that's really intense and beaming on the cheeks. So it stays looking fresh and skin like, which I love. But if you were to use this as a glow primer under foundation, that would be stunning as well. It has that same kind of like wet ish consistency that when you only use a little bit, just feels nice and hydrating on the skin. And all around, I think that this is a nice product. This is also something you could do all over like your decollete area. This bottle's really big. This would last you forever, even if you were to use it in all three of those ways. The last cream complexion product that I have is this Soul Body Face and Body Bronzing Balm. If you are not familiar with this brand, it's like the body sub brand of ColourPop. And I have just not been obsessed with ColourPop for a while, I'll be totally honest. So I didn't have high hopes for this product, but this actually blew me away. It is 
so, so nice. This is one of those products that you can just slap on and it'll end up looking beautiful because it's such an easy to work with formula. It has the perfect amount of slip to it without it being greasy or melty or anything like that. It has really, really beautiful buildable coverage. So it starts off lighter and then you can build this up as you go. I'm so impressed by this. I love the way it looks on my skin. It's definitely something that looks very skin-like. And unlike the Physician's Formula Liquid Bronzer, this one doesn't have any sort of like a luminance to it. So it's more of just a natural glow versus like a little bit of a beamy glow. The shade they sent me in PR is medium and it's definitely a little bit too deep for my fair skin, even though it is a really beautiful shade and it's not too orangey or anything like that. So I'm going to keep this for the summertime when I have a nice fake tan on and then pick up the shade light which will be a bit of a better match for my pasty skin. This is also from ColourPop and it is their Cheek Dew Serum Blush. So they already have the serum blush product, but it has more of like a naturally dewy finish. This one has a shimmering pearl luminous finish. So they added these shimmering pigments to it so that it's more of that like blush lighter look. I was sent the shade Dream Garden, which I was really excited to test out because look at the photos of this. It looks so beautiful. It's like that, oh my gosh, why am I forgetting the name? It has that same kind of vibe as the pink frosting lip that I was talking about in my last favorites video. So I was really excited to test it out, but the actual color is quite a bit different than how it looks in the photos. Just looks like a light kind of baby doll pink in the photos. And this is definitely much more of like a punchy bright pink. It's still pretty. It's just not really what I was expecting. So this is a product that you want to be careful with because as you can see here, well, actually, I don't know if you're going to be able to pick this up on camera, but it has just like, I don't know, a weird texture where it's like balling up the more that I rub it. So it's definitely not something that I would apply and rub in with your fingers if you're looking to do quite a bit of blending because it'll just start to yeah, like bunch up a little bit. But if you just use a little bit of product and blend it in with a stippling brush or a sponge, then I think it does blend nicely and can look really nice and fresh on the cheeks. I'm not obsessed with this, I think just because of the color, it's just not quite right for my complexion. So the fact that it's paired with a luminous finish with the like radiant pearlized pigments in it, I think just emphasizes the fact that it looks a little off on my skin. I don't know, there's something about this undertone that shifts kind of weird with the pearly pigments for me. So it's a pretty product, but I definitely have others that I prefer to this in terms of a cream blush. So not one that I am going to continue using at this moment in time. And I lied again. This is the last liquid complexion product. Sorry, I didn't see it hiding in my stash over there. This is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Vitamin E Makeup Stick Blush. I have the shade Dusty Pink here, which similar to the ColourPop Serum Blush also has that luminous highlightery effect, making it definitely more of a blush lighter than just a blush. And this one also kind of has like an orangey shift like ColourPop, but even more so. And when it's blended out like that, I actually think it's beautiful. Just that like sheen, that little sheen on the cheeks, the kiss of color, I think it's pretty. But when I am trying to use this as more of a pigmented blush, I, again, I'm not obsessed with it just because of the color and undertone and the pair with the kind of highlightery finish. So I think this one is also just going to totally be up to personal preference and whether you find a shade that you really like, if you really love a blush lighter, if you really love a nice cream cheek product that glows on the face, then this is another nice one worth looking into, except for the fact that it's definitely not super long lasting. Don't wanna to forget to say that, but then again, it's $4.49, so you can't really complain. And to wrap up face products, we have a couple new setting powders here. First is the Wet n Wild 5-in-1 Essence Primer and Finish Powder. This one, is actually so, so nice for all over the face. Underneath the eyes, I don't love it. I do find it to just make my concealer look creasy and also be too brightening because of the fact that this has like a white base to it. I mean, you can see right here. 
that's white. So because of that, I don't love it under the eyes. I feel like it just brightens too much and I don't like the look of a super bright under eye. I feel like it just looks really off on my face. But when I use this all over my face, I don't seem to have that same problem, probably just because I apply powder under my eyes differently than I do on the rest of my face. So it works on my face. I don't have a scary, you know, white cast or anything like that. And it looks really, really nice. It just helps to mattify oils, but it's not flat or dry looking. If you have oily skin, I feel like you would really enjoy this because it just gives you that like poreless, flawless look without giving you the look of a heavy setting powder. This is a good one. But if you prefer a glowier setting powder, then these will be for you. These are the new Physicians Formula Butter Glow Pressed Powders. So this one right here is in the shade Translucent Glow. I was nervous about this because I'm like, what is going on? It's like a mosaic of yellow and pink. How is that going to work? But this actually works really well on my skin. And I would agree, doesn't add any sort of color. I'd consider it to be translucent. And this one is in the shade Natural glow which has a deeper yellow brown pink in here so meant for deeper skin tones than me of course but I've actually been using this as a blush and I think it's stunning as a blush so I'm gonna swatch this one here because I want you guys to see oh yeah that definitely helps to pick it up like that has reflex in it up against my bright studio lights that is beaming but when I apply this with more of a fluffy brush for the face and not like the intensity of my finger like that which makes that pigment pop then it it doesn't have that same kind of effect on my skin and instead it does help to mattify oils and set everything in place but in such a nice healthy glowy way so I have it on right now I have really been loving this I think it is so pretty again this one is definitely a little bit too brightening for me to apply under the eyes so I don't love it in that way but all over the face I'm like dang drugstore physicians formula so many fun new launches from them, I love it. We have quite a few new lip launches. Let me just pull all of these over here before we jump into it. First up is the NYX Fat Lip Drip Oil. Is it, well, is it fat oil, lip drip fat oil? or fat lip drip oil. I can't be too sure. I have this one in the shade Mist Call, which is a really pretty, just like fun pink shade. I really like it. And I would say overall, this is a nice lip oil, especially for being a drugstore lip oil. Is it my favorite lip oil of all time? Definitely not. I have lip oils that are cushier than this one where they just feel like, you know, more cushy on the lips. This one is a little bit lighter weight than some of my favorites, and it definitely is a little bit sticky. It's not a product where you're like, oh my God, this is sticking to my lips by any means, but it is a little sticky. It's not, you know, completely soft and smooth in that way. And I do find that within the first hour of wear, it gets even a little bit stickier. However, again, this is a drugstore product. Do we even have any lip oils at the drugstore? Mm. I know Ulta has theirs, but just that you could like pick up at Target or Walgreens. This is either the first or one of the first. So I'm excited it exists and excited to see the future of the lip oil category at the drugstore. We're off to a great start, but I feel like better is on the way. Wet n Wild launched something called the So Pouty Lip Gloss Balm, and I am immediately interested in any product that is described as a lip gloss and a balm in one. Like, that sounds like my heaven. But unfortunately, this product was not my heaven. This, I'm gonna be totally honest, feels like something that you would pick up at Claire's for like $2 when you're a little girl. It's giving fifth grade birthday party favor. Sorry, what shade is this? Sweetest Pick. I actually love how this has a little bit of pigment to it. I wasn't expecting that at all. That's actually super cute. I love that. I wish we would see more products with like this amount of pigment in the lips where it's like the tiniest bit of color. It does not look like you're wearing lip color. It's just like, oh, your lips are a beautiful color naturally. And I get where they were going with this with the whole balm and gloss concept because it definitely feels nice and does have a little bit of a nice sheeny finish, but definitely nowhere near as shiny as a gloss. And it fades really fast and it just, I mean, yes, it feels nice, but like 
not super, super amazing. Like I said, it just feels like something kind of cheap and it smells gross. Just like so artificial and sweet and I hate that. Something that I liked a lot more from Wet n Wild is their rose comforting lip color. So I have two different shades here and a sheer clear one as well. And this kind of lip formula is my favorite thing ever. If you know me, you know I absolutely love a sheer shiny lip moment and that's exactly what these are. Oh my God, so beautiful. Perfectly sheer, perfect amount of pigment here. Gorgeous, glossy finish. I freaking love lip products like this. So I picked up these shades Taffy Daddy and Soft and Juicy. Taffy Daddy is like a pretty rosy, like taupe color. And Soft and Juicy is like a light pink with some shimmer in it. They didn't have a ton of shades. I think they maybe only had like one or two more and then they have this clear one. So I would really love to see more shades because I'm not obsessed with either of these on myself. On other people, these would be stunning, but you know, just not my exact kind of lip shade that I feel like looks the best on me but a really nice product. I will say though that I definitely think the Taffy Daddy shade is more comfortable than Soft and Juicy. With the Soft and Juicy, Juicy. You can definitely feel the fact that there's like pearliness in it. Like you can feel that layer of, it, I shouldn't say glitter because it doesn't feel like glitter on the lips, but you can feel that it's not completely soft and smooth all the way through. Whereas the soft and, I keep messing up these shades, you guys. The Taffy Daddy shade, the darker one that doesn't have any of that sheen in it, is just like completely soft. So that's the one I would recommend. It's not like this is uncomfortable, but it's just not as perfectly comfortable as this one. And then the sheer shade is nice because it's definitely glossier than that gloss balm. Like you're getting more pop there. I like the fact that this is something that's easy to throw on on top of a lipstick. If it's looking a little bit dry, you can just refresh with that. But unfortunately, these all have that same just like cheap smell. Ugh. The second to last lip product is the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Yummy Gloss. I don't think this is technically a new launch, but I feel like it's a product that I newly noticed. So that's why it's in this video. I have this shade, Let's Get Physical, F-I-Z-Z. -Z. How cute. And they actually have a lot of really cute shades, which I love. This is such an interesting gloss. I was very surprised when I first tried it on because it is thick and nice for a drugstore gloss. I love that in a drugstore gloss, but it stings and has that like lip plumpery effect. And I just am not obsessed with lip glosses like that. Like I'd rather they not have the tingly feel. But other than the stinging effect, I would say that the actual texture itself is again, nice and thick and comfortable. It has really nice shine. It's not super long lasting, but what lip gloss is, let's be honest, I have no issue reapplying lip gloss because I love lip gloss. The only issue I have with this, aside from the sting, is the smell. It is such a weird, intense smell. It reminds me of like a some sort of carbonated sparkling water where it has that like fake fruit smell, you know? It literally smells like fizzy and fruity and fake all at once. <laughs> oh, lusciously scented with pink berry citrus, coconut water, or red pineapple. This is definitely the pineapple one. Uh-huh, and I don't like it. And the other lip gloss that I have is the Physician's Formula Diamond Gloss. This is just a sheer gloss in the shade Crystal Clear. And this one also, oh, really surprised me when I first put it on, but in a nice way. How much lip gloss can I layer in this video? Oh my gosh, this feels so nice when you first apply it. This is plushy and cushy and the gloss of my dreams. Like this might be the thickest drugstore gloss I have ever tried. Is that right? I think that might be right. Mm, I just am obsessed with lip glosses that feel like that or lip oils or any lip product. They just, I don't know, are something special to me. So I really, really like this one. It again is not something that's super long lasting and it does have a little tiny bit of a tacky or sticky feel, but for a drugstore clear gloss, I gotta think. I think this is the best drugstore clear gloss I've tried. I think I can safely say that. All right, let's wrap up the video with eyes. I have two mascaras and a brow gel. The first mascara is the Neutrogena Hydro Blue... Blue... <laughs> I cannot talk today. Hydro Boost Plumping Mascara. Oh, this is waterproof? 
I had no idea. That explains a lot. I hate waterproof mascara. I just feel like they never work as well on my lashes as regular mascara. This was no exception. So here's the wand. It's like fatter at the bottom, tapered off towards the top. And this was just too clumpy for me. Didn't lengthen and separate as much as I would want it to. So a pass. I mean, that would make sense if it's like hydro boost, waterproof, but I wonder if they have a non-waterproof version. I would be inclined to try that. Waterproof just never does me good. The other is the new Maybelline The Falsies Surreal Mascara. And this was another from Maybelline that when I opened it, I looked at the little wand and I was like, eh, I don't know about that that can't be anything special, but it ended up working so well. Even though it doesn't look like it would, it actually separates really nicely and adds great volume. I got the shade, oh, I don't think it's on here. Oh, yes it is, brown black. And I love that because I feel like this kind of mascara is my favorite kind of look for a more like natural lash day. So I like that it's paired with more of a brown shade. I really wish the drugstore had more just like straight up brown mascaras. I feel like it's so difficult to find in a formula that I really love. So this is like as good as it gets for me, but I've really, really been liking this. It's super pretty. I will say that it does like shorten a little bit on the lashes throughout the day. I don't end up with flakes under my eyes, but I do notice that it doesn't hold the like full length and volume all day long, which almost no mascara does. But other than that, I like it and I'm gonna keep wearing it. And last is the Essence Fix It Like a Boss Transparent Brow Fixing Gel. It claims to be extra strong. There's a sticker of that right on the top. Uh, okay, so I have it on right now. I'm gonna add a little bit more. This is one of those that I feel like actually does layer well and you get a better result when you do that. So, okay. We're actually doing this in real time. You can see there that that brushes up better than we have over here. So I feel like I get this to work best for me when I apply a layer of it, let it dry, then go back in with another, and then my brows will actually hold up decently well. Still not like as brushed up as you'd expect, but I have problem brows. I'm still on my microblading, or I guess I got nanoblading done. So I'm still on that journey where I'm in between the initial application that I had done and then the touch up, so much of it has faded and has not come back. And I know that that does happen, but I feel like it's been long enough now to where they should have reemerged. So I'm like, uh, what are we gonna do about this? But at least for now, that means I can keep testing out brow products like this for you guys. So I would say it's a good brow gel if you're looking for something to just make your eyebrows stick up and not move and you have brows like me that don't like to do that, then this is probably not gonna be for you, but it's definitely one of the better brow gels that I have tried from the drugstore for sure. All right, you guys, we are going to wrap up this video here. I feel like I was all over the place filming this today, so I apologize if it felt a little bit jumpy or anything like that. I am just in puppy mom, brain, tired, everything. I'm in that era of my life. So I'm trying to keep it together, stay snappy, but some days I am just, yeah, not as on top of it as I would like to be. Let me know in the comments below if you are going to test out any of these products after watching this video. As always, they're all listed and linked in order of mention in my description box below. If there's anything else from the drugstore that you would like me to test out in my next What's New at the Drugstore video, definitely leave that in the comments. I will be reading through those when this video goes live. And if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for doing those things. Your support means the world. Thank you for watching my videos. I love the freaking heck out of you guys. Make sure to stay tuned for my next one because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days.